Hello and welcome to this voyage of Bubble Rocket. Destination, a theme 65 million years in the making. As a big fan of the Jurassic Park novel, I was already fairly interested when LEGO announced a line of sets based on the classic film. But you know me, when sets under £30 are done right, I think they're among the best LEGO has to offer. Dilophosaurus Ambush, the second of its name, is certainly a small set done right. Exclusive minifigure, exclusive creature, exclusive printed piece, effective side build, affordable, sizeable, the hits just keep on coming. Now, price first. When discussing LEGO vehicles, Speed Champions is an excellent benchmark. The new, two studs wider, cars from 2020 onwards saw a price increase from $12.99 originally to $17.99, and more recently to $19.99. This set, comparatively, sits at an odd 20 99 which feels a little too much like LEGO just trying to squeeze an extra pound out of it because they can. License tax and all that. Despite that, and even though this vehicle is simpler than a modern Speed Champions car, though still 8 studs wide, dare I say that piece count alone, bearing in mind it's including the large moulded dinosaur, makes Dilophosaurus Ambush feel... underpriced? It feels strange to be saying that in 2023. Speaking of LEGO size differences, despite being smaller than in the other set of this name, the titular Dilophosaurus, with exclusive markings, rather comically reveals just how undersized the T-Rex in Dino Island was. But that's exactly why I love Dino Island, and why I love this set. Dinos in this scale, no pun intended, with two, or in the case of the Dilophosaurus, even just one moving part, still feel worth it. They feel distinctively Lego despite the lack of studs. When dinos get this big, we're moving into action figure territory, and you start to wonder why there isn't more articulation in, say, the knees or neck. Listen, I know a lot of people are excited for this Brachiosaurus, and I'm not knocking it, but in terms of value, creatures this sheer size risk straying into being big lumps of plastic, and a combination of brick-built and specialised pieces almost becomes preferable depending on your aesthetic tastes. Almost. But back to the set, and luckily, for the sake of remaining child appropriate, we don't get any production images of the Dilophosaurus in the Jeep, because we all know what happens after that. But we do get the moment which made me burst into tears the first time I ever saw it as a child, with included minifigure Dennis Nedry. Being such a visceral moment, we can assume the sticky, venomous spit in the eyes probably didn't feel great, I'm still genuinely surprised LEGO included this. Nedry also has a rain-streaked surprise face. I know this would have required a new recolour, but it feels like a big oversight to not include a yellow raincoat hood. LEGO are known for making entirely exclusive, hyper-specific moulds for certain characters. A yellow hood would have been an easy to produce, versatile and highly reusable piece for the company to have in their repertoire. Now for the main build. Hang on! A grey vehicle, with red accents, a terrain side build with plant elements, and a small dino? Lift the soft top, and there's exactly enough space back here for a classic adventurer's crate. And... is that a gear stick? This is getting a bit freaky now. The running boards are caked in mud, and also have some familiar footprints on either side. These are straight out of the comics included with the Dino Island character packs, adding yet another detail which feels distinctively like a callback. Just a small nitpick, I've heard those nougat elements are supposed to represent mud? It's just done incredibly poorly, it looks more like rusted paint, and could have just been left off. But back to the topic at hand. Now, I've done some digging. Be sure to skip to the relevant timestamp if LEGO speculation isn't your thing. Designer Atticus TM seems to confirm he designed Dilophosaurus Ambush, and goes on to imply the Jeep Wrangler in this set had to be simplified ever so slightly due to different age ranges on this and Brachiosaurus Discovery. Atticus started designing in 2020, while his collaborator, Wound Sei Chi, started in 2016, so neither had any hand in Dino Island. But the designer of those original adventurer's sets, including the Dino Explorer, does still seem to work at LEGO. The last set he added to his designer brick list was a creative pack from last year. Maybe he was consulted? It feels like there are too many similarities between the two sets to be pure coincidence. I'll be sure to post any developments down the line. Wait a second. I've decided to keep everything I just said to show my process, but with impeccable timing, halfway through recording this video, there has been a development which all but confirms my theory. 
While checking Brickset to obtain images of Atticus's statements, I noticed he'd added another set to the list of those he designed. As soon as I saw that that set was Indiana Jones' Escape from the Lost Tomb, even before I'd read what I'm about to show you, I got a premonition something was about to shift. Lo and behold, in his notes on this set, Atticus confirms that he, like me, was raised on adventurers, and here he cites that theme in writing as a chief inspiration, even affirming he designed Lost Tomb as a quote, homage to lines like Lego adventurers. I think we can now safely say, far beyond mere speculation, that this is one designer who knows his Lego history and does indeed utilise it to inform his present day design work. I now have very little doubt that this also extends to the Dilophosaurus ambush. What I do know is that LEGO designers are hiding frogs in pretty much every single set they can get away with these days, but I like to think in these Jurassic Park sets they're references to the amphibian DNA spliced with the dinos. I've heard this one is supposed to represent the Barbasol foam, but that never happened in this scene. Regardless, this is only the sixth appearance of the white frog, last seen in 2021, and while there are rarer shades, judging it against the element's 113 green appearances, I think we're doing well to get it in white here in such a small set. Beyond that, getting two fern pieces is nice, and there's a serviceable action feature with the signpost. I suppose I can't call myself a Dino Island fan and dislike smashing vehicles into things, but we've got to talk about that Barbasol can, made of two set-exclusive printed elements. No stickers here. Although unfortunately, there were plenty elsewhere, despite a majority being placed on tiles which could easily have been printed as well. Ultimately, it feels like just as much consideration was put into the adult-oriented details of Dilophosaurus Ambush as there was into making it a good toy. Think about it. Any child can roll the jeep around and crash it into the sign, or have the dinosaur eat the man, but what child grabbing this set off the shelf is going to have any notion of the purpose of the Barbasol can, the sign spinning, or even the spit on Nedry's face, out of context? Dilophosaurus Ambush is chock full of inclusions you can point to when people try to argue LEGO is only made for kids, and that just makes it better. I'm certainly biased, but this set's apparent Dino Island influences appeal to me greatly. This review turned into a great exercise for me when it comes to researching the relationships and correlations between designers and their sets, and cross-referencing against past themes. It's an aspect I'd never considered before in my LEGO journey, and it's given me a deeper appreciation for the whole process. I have Dilophosaurus Ambush to thank for that, but even setting all of that meta discussion aside, this is a great little set on its own which is well worth the comparatively low price of entry. I'm sure you can already tell, but I can definitely recommend this one. What do you think? Is this set a hidden tribute to Dino Island after all, or am I just forcing the pieces of evidence to fit my theory? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, that's all for this voyage of Boggle Rocket. Who knows where it'll go next? There's a few destinations on the horizon, and I hope you'll come along for the trip.